All right, so now let's learn how to implement a, your own custom ZSH theme as well as do some of these cool things like get these icons in your prompt. So uh, with ZSH, we have uh, these things called themes or some people like to call them prompts. And it's essentially when you hit enter or uh, when you do something like touch index or touch about.html, it, it changes and it gives you a little bit of information about anything really. It, it, generally people like to know where you are, um, uh, what branch you're on, if your, your Git uh, repo is dirty or not. Um, <clears throat> and there's a whole listing of themes on the ZSH wiki. So if you go to the Oh My ZSH uh, GitHub, and you go to wiki and uh, they have all kinds of themes. I think it's right here. Yep, this is a listing of all the different themes. So let's just take kind of a quick look at, at what some people are doing. So some people like to show their current directory, show the branch, um, a little asterisk depending on uh, the state of the GitHub repo. Uh, again, this guy's like, some people like to put the machine that they're on. So uh, lots of times people use ZSH on multiple different servers. So it's important to know which machine am I actually running this command on? If I'm trying to remove files, I want to make sure that I'm actually on the the development server, not the production server. So they like to put the, the server or the machine name in there. Uh, what other kinds of stuff do we have here? Again, lots of Git master. Um, some people who work in Ruby like to know exactly what version of Ruby the, they're running in. Uh, sometimes they switch around in different versions of Ruby. Uh, some simple ones, this is what, kind of what I have. Uh, master, green check mark means it's nice and clean. More Ruby. Some people have a nice little timestamp. Um, again, this is the username at the actual machine. Uh, all kinds of cool stuff that you can add to your prompt. And it's just helpful information to your workflow uh, that you like to use. So how do we actually get some of these themes into our thing? Before we do that, we need to actually uh, do a quick information about something called dot .files. So all of your settings for ZSH are saved in a dot .file, um, and that dot .file lives in your home directory. So if you've never used Terminal to go to your home directory, your home directory is simply just tilde. So if you hit tilde, or CD tilde, you can actually, with ZSH, you can just type tilde and it will put you there. That's, that's another screencast. Um, and that's your home directory and it'll have all of your information in it. I'm just gonna jump back. Um, <clears throat> in your home directory lives a file called dot ZSHRC. Um, and that holds all of the settings. The reason that you may not have seen files like this is by default, most computers hide files that start with a dot. So in order for us to get to it, we actually need to open it via the command line. So let's go ahead and open that file uh, with whatever our favorite editor is. Um, if you have sublime text, you can do subl. We'll do tilde, which is our home directory, forward slash, and then we just want the actual file. So usually it'd be like dog.jpg, uh, but in this case, it's just simply dot zshrc. And what that will do is, uh, let me drag it over here, opens up our ZSHRC file. If you don't have that subl command installed on your computer, you can either just break for a second and make sure you have it. There's, we've got other videos on that. Or you can just do the open ZSHRC. And what that will do is it will just open it up in Notepad. Um, it's not as nice because it's not syntax highlighted for you. So I don't, I don't like it, but you can do it that way as well. So our ZSH theme, uh, you've got all kinds of different settings in here. Um, I've got some stuff. I'm going to explain exactly what all this stuff is in, in a future video. Um, but the one line we want to look for is the ZSH underscore theme equals. And this is where we're able to set the name of the theme. So um, let's actually just start with a random. Uh, so I'm going to take Cobalt 2 out and type random and give it a save. Um, and random will load a, a random theme every time we start up our editor. So uh, in order to have it work, if I hit enter, nothing happens. 
Uh, well, one easy way is you just open up a new tab and you can see right away, I've just got a brand new uh, West Boss at WB. WB is my computer name. Actually, I have a two in there for some reason uh, and I'm in my Dropbox folder. If I open up another tab, it actually gives me another one, kind of a cool little timestamp, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another way that we can do this is something called source. So uh, this instance of ZSH doesn't know that we made a change to our ZSHRC file. So if we source it, uh, then it will chain, make all of those changes for us. So we can just type source, and then again, we go to that path, home directory forward slash ZSHRC. And essentially it'll kind of just do the same thing as us opening up a new tab. It just starts a brand new instance of ZSHRC. So I can close these guys down. If I run that a couple times, you can see, uh, don't pay attention to this. This is just for me understanding what version of Ruby when I started up. If I run it again, you can see I've got this. It's got a timestamp. Every single time I've got kind of, ooh, I like that, happy face. A random theme. This one's pretty simple. It just tells you where you are. You get the point, right? You're able to set a random theme on every single one. But what if you find a theme that you actually do like and you want to have that set? So how we do that is we look at the available themes and we're able, we can go ahead and set it uh, right here. So what are the available themes? Um, you could look at this themes one, however, it's actually pretty out of date. You can notice there's a whole bunch of broken images. So it's and a lot of these screenshots are in great quality. So I probably would take a quick look at it, but don't think these are the only ones available. Uh, so what you can do is open up the themes directory for ZSH. So we can type open and tilde is our home directory forward slash. And rather than typing dot ZSHRC, we just open a folder that's called dot O. And then if you hit tab, just type dot O and hit tab and it should complete to dot O dash my dash ZSH. So if I open that up, you can see that this is my oh my ZSH folder, and there's all kinds of little goodies in here, uh, including a themes directory. So these are all the themes that come with ZSH. Um, there's thousands and thousands more on GitHub. If you find one that you like and it's not in here, you can just pop it right into this directory. For example, my Cobalt 2 is not doesn't come with ZSH. Uh, I made it myself. Uh, however, it's on GitHub, so you just download it, pop it in your themes directory, and uh, you'll be able to set it. So let's take a look. Um, Agnoster is a pretty popular one, so I'm just going to copy that one. Go back in here, paste it in, give it a save. Uh, we'll do the whole source, ZSHRC again. And I am able to have uh, all of my kind of layout. So this is actually similar to the one that I use. However, you probably get these weird little uh, characters and it's not working. So when you want the check mark or when you want the cool arrows or when you want something that isn't available for you um, and you see these weird little icons, you need to install something called Powerline Fonts. So uh, if you do a quick search for Powerline Fonts GitHub, you should see github.com forward slash Powerline forward slash fonts. Um, and essentially what these are is a list of all of the fonts that you may use for your terminal. Uh, so look for your favorite font that you use. And they have been patched to include the special characters uh, for my uh, for these in this case it's arrows um, it may be a check mark it may be a, a smiley face whatever it is it needs to be able to uh, have this special font in order to display the arrows otherwise you're going to get weird characters like this so what we would do here is just go i'm a big friend big fan of in consolata you would download in consolata for power line click raw and it's going to go ahead and download that, open it up, 
I already have this installed, so I'm not going to install it, but you would click install. Then we would head back to our preferences in, uh, in our iTerm and click on text, click change font. And in here, what you would do is just find the font that you want. In this case, I'm using Menlo for Powerline and I have that set up for my Cobalt too. Uh, but you would find the Powerline font that you installed and make sure that you click on that one and get out of here. And it should say uh, Menlo regular for Powerline and Consolata regular for Powerline, uh, whatever, whatever for Powerline. So make sure that you have the patched version of the Powerline font installed and then you will start to see the cool characters show up. If you're just using the regular uh, Menlo or the regular Inconsolata um, on here, you're going to get issues with this stuff showing up. And that's one of the most common thing I get questions about. People say, hey, I'm not sure how to get this kind of cool prompt. I see these weird characters. So again, install the font and make sure that your terminal is using that font. So. I'm just going to change mine back to Cobalt 2, do a quick source. Oh, that's another little tip. If you want to, if you just type something recently, just hit your up arrow and hit your up arrow again until you find what you wanted. Hit enter. It's going to open up and you can see that I'm, uh, I'm back in my place here. I've got my cool little uh, arrows here. If I change into the, our command line directory. Uh, you see that this is a little branch symbol for GitHub. Uh, this is a little um, plus minus right here for my Git, and I'm able to see the information on that. So hopefully that sh gives you information on how to get a custom prompt, a custom theme, in addition to using the custom layout for iTerm. In the next video, we'll take a look at some of the um, things you can do with ZSH. So things like tab completions and some of the plugins and, and really dive into what are the real benefits over a regular Bash shell. Thanks. See you then. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you check out my book and video series, Sublime Text Power User at sublimetextbook.com. Use coupon code command line for 10 bucks off. As always, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Westboss, W-E-S-B-O-S. -S. Talk to you again soon.